Hello world, it's Siraj, and in this tutorial video, I'm going to show you how to build a decentralized lending app that lets a user borrow money by first depositing some money as collateral, all without needing permission from a bank or corporation. Anyone in the world can participate. This will be an app that uses the standard languages of the web, namely JavaScript for interactivity and HTML for its layout. But the core lending logic will be written as smart contracts in a language called Solidity so that they can be stored on the Ethereum blockchain, which is an unstoppable world computer that no entity can modify or shut down. The problem though with Ethereum is that making any kind of transaction requires high fees. So we'll deploy the app instead to a blockchain called Polygon with much lower fees. Polygon is an Ethereum compatible blockchain that has faster transactions and much lower fees, but has the same security benefits as Ethereum because it's connected to it. The way the user flow works is that a user can go to the web app and choose to deposit some amount of ether as collateral. This ether is stored on the blockchain in a Vault smart contract account. Then they will receive a stablecoin token pegged to the US dollar as a loan. The amount of stable tokens that a user can borrow depends on how much they deposited into the vault and the current price of Ether in USD. This price is derived from another smart contract called an Oracle, which accesses real-world data directly from the blockchain. At any time, a user can repay the borrowed tokens to the vault and then be able to withdraw their collateral afterwards. There are five dependencies to install, Node.js, NPM, Truffle, and Ganache, and Web3.js. Node lets us build applications in JavaScript. NPM is a JavaScript package manager. Truffle is a development framework for Ethereum that lets us build and deploy smart contracts easily. Ganache is a personal test Ethereum blockchain that we can use to run tests on. And Web3.js is a JavaScript library to call Ethereum nodes from the front end of a web app. Node.js has an easy one-click binary installer for both Mac and Windows that we can download and run from the website. Once Node is installed, we can open up our command line to ensure that it's installed by running the node version command. Then we can install npm with a single download command, afterwards checking if it works by running npm version. Now that npm is installed, we can use it to install truffle with the npm install truffle command. Truffle will have its own command we can test in terminal to see if it's installed. Lastly, we'll install the command line version of Ganache from terminal. Now, let's install this repository from GitHub by running git init, then git clone, and once it's downloaded, npm install to install all the associated dependencies. In a different terminal window, let's fire up our test blockchain with Ganache at the port labeled 7545. We can quickly see if the existing repository tests are working by running the truffle test command in a different window, using the network flag to specify which blockchain, the one we want to use being development. Now let's open up the code in a text editor and have a look. This is a starter app built with the Truffle framework. It has the same structure as all Truffle apps that we could create with the Truffle init command. We have a contract folder which has Solidity smart contracts, a migrations folder which contains scriptable smart contract deployment files written in JavaScript, the test folder holds test files for our app and contracts, and the truffleconfig.js file helps us define which network we want to connect to and what version of Solidity we'd like to use, as well as many other options if we so choose. Let's take a look at the smart contracts, starting with the main one, vault.sol, which stands for Solidity. We declare the class file with the ownable keyword, which means its functions are only visible to the owner and not publicly. We'll create a store of data as key value pairs using the mapping keyword. Then initialize a stablecoin token variable from another contract that creates them and an oracle variable from another contract that pulls price data from the real world. In the constructor, we'll define the two variables needed when deploying the contract, the stable token and the oracle that are needed. Now, we can get to the functions. There are five key functions here. Deposit, withdraw, get vault, estimate collateral amount, and estimate token amount. Deposit lets a user deposit Ether as collateral in exchange for some amount of stablecoin. The amount of stablecoin that is minted is the price is the amount of Ether deposited times the price of one Ether in USD. 
Once minted, the collateral amount is stored in the vaults array as well as the, amounts that, the amount that was sent to the user in stablecoin for record keeping. The withdraw function allows a user to withdraw up to 100% of the collateral that they deposited. The parameter for this function is the amount of stablecoin the user is repaying to redeem their collateral. The repayment amount is calculated as ether and whatever they return in stablecoin is burned, aka destroyed. Then the vaults array is updated to include the new collateral amount and debt amount. Lastly, the user is sent an amount of Ether proportional to what they paid back in stablecoin. The get, the get Vault function merely shows the user, given the vault's owner's address, how much total collateral and debt is on the account record. Estimate collateral amount and estimate tokens amount can be used in a user interface to display to a user how much they would get back as collateral if they paid stablecoin back and how much stablecoin they would get back if they deposited Ether, respectively. That's really it for smart contracts. This is just the main one. It just calls the others as helpers. The Oracle just gets the ETH USD price from an existing contract on the test Ethereum blockchain called Kovan. Let's add a web interface to this using node.js. We can create a file called main.js, then use the starter code for node to create an HTTP server at the port 8081. It will read HTML from an index.html file, which we'll use web3.js in to call smart contract code we deployed from the browser. In the index file, we'll set up some buttons and text field inputs for a user to submit their deposit amount or repayment amount. We'll also set up text divs to display information like the current ETHUSD price and the amount they'll receive as collateral for a deposit. In the script tag, we'll add Web3.js code to call the deploy contracts. Now, instead of Ethereum, we can deploy the same exact app to the Polygon blockchain using this command with Ganache. All the functionality works the same, but transactions are now cheaper and faster. Pretty easy, right? The coding challenge for this week is to build your own finance app, be it a loan, betting market, insurance, or simple escrow with Polygon. Post your GitHub repository on either Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook with the hashtag builtwithpolygon. Visit the Polygon docs for more details. I'll announce the winner next week. And until next time, happy learning, everyone.